Welcome back to Postgres for MySQL DBAs. This is episode four. Out of this episode, we're going to install a test database. Uh, does this no good to give you a working Postgres instance if there's not any data out there to go out and make queries? Now, the good news is if you're used to Sequila, if you're in the MySQL world, uh, which has been out there for years and years and years using documentation, training, videos, everything, there's a similar database called DVD Rental. Uh, you can get it from this URL up here, postgrestutorial.com slash WP dash content upload slash 2019 slash 05 slash DVD rental dot zip. Uh, believe it or not, at one time, if you wanted to watch a movie that was not on broadcast TV, you went to a store and uh, rented video cassettes or later DVDs. Uh, was it on streaming services? And this is like the Skill database, the data for a store that runs that type of business. And download that that uh, DVD rental dot zip, unzip it, and then what you're going to do is you're going to sudo to super user as the user Postgres, and you're going to run PSQL, which is the main command line uh, client for Postgres. Uh, notice you have an equal sign here before the Octothorpe that tells you you're, you've got privileges. We're going to create database DVD rental. And then we exit out a PSQL. And then we run a, a, a command called PG Restore minus capital U for the user. The user's Postgres name is up here. And for the database named DVD rental, that's what the minus D stands for. We're going to read the material from dvdrental.tar. Now, this database is not exactly like the Sequila database. It's pretty close. Uh, in this example, I don't want you to have an exact copy. I want you to have something that's a little different, so you have to go out and explore the tables to figure out how to do some of the familiar joins you're used to with Sequila. But it's it's very close. Now, if you want to go out there, the DVD rental database is very Sequila-ish. Uh, you'll see these 15 tables out there for everything from the name of actors to the countries where the various stores are for our, our DVD rental business are located. Uh, you can join these. They're designed to uh, let you explore various things in SQL to get your information. Now, we don't want you running everything as Postgres, just like in MySQL, you're not supposed to run everything as root. So back to the bash command line. Once again, F-U-D-O, sudo, S-U as Postgres again. Uh, if you haven't logged out from the previous time, you can still use this. We're going to type in create user, interactive, and then minus S and then the username. Now, this minus S is the thing that gives that person super user privilege. This bypasses some of the checks when you log in. Uh, the reason we're doing this is this is a test instance. If you destroy it, you know how to reinstall the software now. You know where to get the data from. Uh, worst comes to worst, you just repeat steps. Now, the good thing is if you have a database background, um, you hopefully can be trusted with these privileges. Uh, if not, you're going to learn how to restore stuff rather quickly. Now, for the time being, I recommend using the login for your Linux account, uh, same as for the user of here. Uh, type who am I to double check just to make sure that you are who you think you are. Now, from there, we have given you super user privilege, which can be dangerous. Uh, hopefully, you know not to do deletes without a where clause and updates without a where clause and things like that. But you now have a working instance with a database. Now, if you don't want to create the user account, there's a second way to do it. If you want to create your account, user account from within Postgres, it's real simple. Uh, log in to, uh, again, become super user issue to Postgres, run PSQL, and at the Postgres prompt, say create user, whatever username is with super user. That's equivalent to the create user command. Now, for our first use of the database, we're going to use PSQL, so log out of that Postgres account if you're still logged in there, get into your normal shell account. And you're going to type PSQL minus D to declare the database that you're going to in DVD rental. 
uh, you'll come up with a prompt and you'll see DVD rental equals sign and the Octothorpe uh, equal means you have some privileges. So you got to be careful. Now, if you go out there and run some simple SQL commands, the good news is SQL is pretty much SQL. Uh, so go out and do a select star from the actor table, but only look at the first 10 or so lines. You don't need to read all of them. Uh, if you get adventurous, go out there and figure out how to determine what the top grossing movie for each year is, or the actors who appeared in the most films, and, and things like that. This is a, a database for you to go out and experiment with. Uh, it's similar to Tequila, so it should feel somewhat familiar. And the great thing is now you have a safe environment, uh, which you can go out and make practice queries and learn the basics of S uh, Postgres. So congratulations, you've gotten through the hard part of this series. And in this episode, we installed Postgres, uh, put in a well, previous episode, we installed Postgres. Now we have a test database and we've created a user account. So now you are pretty much up and running. The future episodes in the series, we'll talk about some of the finer points that might be areas that are a little bit turbulent for those who are just setting sail on the Postgres C. And that at the end of episode four. Now, please come back and we're going to talk about some of the more unique Postgres commands that are different from what you're used to in MySQL. Thank you.